Now that you know some of the basics for drawing resonance contributors, we're going to discuss the rules that you'll need to follow every time you draw your resonance contributors, and also go over some examples with you. The first thing that we discussed earlier is that you must draw a bona fide Lewis structure every time you draw resonance. For example, when we have this negative charge on oxygen and the positive charge on nitrogen, you cannot draw that arrow down and form that double bond uh, and get rid of those charges because there are 10 electrons around that nitrogen and it's not a valid Lewis structure. So do not fall into that trap. The second rule is that the positions of the nuclei must remain in the same place. For example, we can't draw this lone pair coming from oxygen and attacking that carbocation to form that new bond. That is not resonance. In fact, that is part of a reaction. And we'll be discussing reactivity at a later date. But when drawing resonance, that is incorrect. The third thing you'll need to keep in mind is that the number of unpaired electrons must not change. So in this example, we can take a look at what it would look like if those two double bonds became one single double bond between those two central carbons, shown here, and then put radicals on each of those outside carbons, shown here. This is not a valid uh, resonance contributor because we have broken a bond and not formed another bond. And in doing so, uh, we have changed that number of unpaired electrons, and therefore that is not a valid structure to draw. The important resonant contributors will indeed have comparable energies to them. So these are some guidelines to help determine which are the more important resonance structures that you can draw. The first of which is the more covalent bonds you can draw, the greater the importance. So if we take a look at our diene here, if we were to draw a resonance structure in which we push those electrons to one of those outside carbon atoms, we have fewer covalent bonds than we had previously. Therefore, the, uh, the one on the left is indeed going to be more important. Also because we now have an incomplete octet on that left carbon. This carbocation with an incomplete octet will decrease its importance as a resonance contributor. The second thing to keep in mind is that the importance will decrease as the charge separation increases. Opposite charges like to be close together, so the farther apart you stretch them, the less important that contributor will be. Take a look at our diene example again here. If we were to move those electrons from one of those bonds to that central carbon, that is indeed going to be more important than if we spread out that charge all the way across that molecule. Still, those two resonance contributors are not all that important, but one of them is going to be more important than the other. The third thing to keep in mind is that charge structures should be drawn that's consistent to the atom's abilities to bear that charge. So for example, we have formaldehyde shown here, the double bond between a carbon and an oxygen. We have two options for where to push those electrons. The first option is to push them up onto the oxygen, put a negative on oxygen and a positive on the carbon. The other option is to push those electrons down to the carbon, therefore giving a carbanion, a negative on, on the carbon, and an, a positive charge on the oxygen. Well, which one of these is more important? This goes back to what we learned previously with our stability rules, and we know that oxygen can better hold a negative charge than can carbon. Because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, it's going to be a more important resonance contributor. Fourth thing to keep in mind is that any structure that has a distorted bond angle or a distorted bond length from what you previously had is not going to be a very important resonance contributor. For example, we can keep these atoms in the same place in space and change the electron configuration as such. We now have a double bond between the two carbons and a long single bond between those two hydrogens. This is not going to be an important resonance contributor because we have the bond angles distorted from what they would like to be and also a very long bond between those two hydrogens. Because that bond is too long, that is not an important resonance contributor. So a little summary for these resonance contributors is that the resonance contributors, they're just alternate depictions of the electron cloud around that molecule. For what we see here, this negative charge gets pushed onto our oxygen atom, and all we're doing is redistributing the electrons in that molecule. So these resonance forms are going to be very important when we discuss our reactivity, because resonance will oftentimes show some hidden reactivity within the molecule. 